morning, video games. Welcome to Filthy Casuals, a podcast about video games hosted by three very kind and extremely knowledgeable boys. Thank you very much for joining us. My name is Tommy Dasselow and with me, as always, it's Ben Vanell on a muggy spring day. Mm. It is muggy. It's, it's been <laughs> muggy late. I got home late the other night, right? Oh, um, because Bloody I was dark. mugged. Oh, no. <laughs> My name's Adam Knox. It, it was uh, foggy. To the point where it was like being inside of a cloud. It was Ooh. awesome. Ooh. Nah, it was Ooh. cool. I love that. The house Real, next uh, door. Two was... rock, two hours. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> okay. That the, 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 like Silent Hill is a bit of a meme thing at the mm-hmm. moment. Yes. People, you know, we're walking home or like you know, you go from your bed to the bathroom without a torch in the middle of the night, mm. and it's got the Silent Hill guy walking yep. through Silent Hill. Yep. Being right. Like, Damn. This is a quiet mountain. For people too young <laughs> to remember that era of video games, the Nintendo sixty four era, mm. games would commonly use fog to disguise the fact that they weren't able to render things off in the distance. Mm. And I remember it was like used fairly commonly and you just kind of accepted it as a as a thing yep. that was just present in games. But I remember I think it was Two Rock Two. I remember there was like a game that came out that really broke the back of it where people went Okay, this is insane. Mm. There's Turok too much fog in there. Turok 1 had a lot of it. Yeah. Right. But it kind of worked because then you get a big dinosaur coming up at you through the fog. Yeah. yeah. It's a bad time to, to be out in a dinosaur town. I remember Lens Flare was day. the other big one of the time. Not that that was like mm. a, a disguising technical limitations thing, but it was like it was a show every off. game would have yeah. a bit where it's like opening opening bit of the level, you look around, ying. Yeah. <laughs> it's like in like the sort of 10, 15 years ago when they started being able to, they would have a thing where you early on saw, whoa, look how wide this landscape is. Oh, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Big panning camera. Fallout 3 did mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Huh. <laughs> Weird, the fallout comes up. Yeah. Because... uh, I wonder why it's on your mind, Adam. I think this morning or overnight, our Mm. time, Mm. Vanity Fair... uh, My favourite publication. I like uh, Vanity Biased. Okay. They're way better. Okay. But sometimes I hate them. (laughs) Yeah, Vanity Fair and Balanced, the Fox News. (laughs) (laughs) That's Vanity Biased. They got the exclusive for some reason. Mm. About uh, the new Fallout TV show, which I knew was happening. Yeah. And it's been on the cards for a fair while. It's been Prime Video. I had no idea or had read and forgotten about who was attached and what it was. It's a big sort of preview thing with a few screenshots mm. of uh, of the show that it's coming out in April. Yep. Yeah. It's, uh, the other Nolan. Yep. Not Christopher. What's his name? Jonathan. Right. Who, like, co-wrote a lot of his films? Yeah. Yeah. And was apparently at the helm of Westworld, That's which, right. again, <laughs> I had no idea about. The seven, six, seven season long HBO hit show Westworld that have been... I watched the first season. Seven? Something like that. Seven seasons? Six, seven, yeah. Was it five? It went Didn't for eight. It? And they cancelled it before it was over. Let, uh, yeah. I thought it went for like two seasons. No, well, yeah. we're longer than two. I, I can guarantee that. I, my, I'm going to lock in my bet. Maybe five is right. Oh, this is the new Berenstein Bears. <laughs> <laughs> you lived in a world where there were seven seasons of Westworld oh, okay. and they were all drinking <laughs> Coca Cola. Yeah, no, I was way off. Um, four seasons. Four. It makes sense That's that still ben way would, longer than I thought. Ben yeah. calling four seven happens often, though. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah, dude. Penis joke, anyone? That's awesome. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Four seasons, 36 episodes. It's the um, girth of the show that matters, though. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's the motion of the show. Sh- sh- show. Yeah. The, yeah, it's, uh, it, it looks weird to me from the screenshots. You can't tell, obviously. In motion, things look different. It's my fucking insight. <laughs> but it looks like sort of oddly cartoony. A little like, bit, yeah, well, yeah. What, well, what were we talking about this in relation to recently? Some other adaptation where it's like, do you go... Do you try and be faithful to the game mm. sort of aesthetic, which is, yeah, going to be more cartoony or do yeah. you sort of scrap that and Probably go, we're Zelda. doing our real life? Yeah, yeah, we've been Zelda. Yeah, yeah. Or do you go like, this is what the, if this didn't exist as a game and you were just developing it for TV and you had right. no prior thing in your head, this is how you'd make it look. And yeah. yeah, it does look like they've gone more sort of, yeah, closer to the game, which looks weird on camera. Mm. To, to Fallout 4 in particular, yeah. which right. looked different to 3, which looked different to 1 and 2, yes. to my eyes yep. as well. So uh, it, they, it, it's, it's a, a thing with um, 
He goes by something else. His name's Jonathan Nolan, and he goes by, and they had that in the article, and I don't remember. Christopher what Nolan's brother. <laughs> <laughs> Please, Be Christopher legal. Nolan's brother was my father. <laughs> I'm Christopher Nolan's nephew. Uh, would that be right? Yeah. Christopher Nolan's brother was Christopher my Nolan's brother. brother's yes. yep. son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. But who was doing the operation? Uh, the, the the it's him Jonah. And, Jonah, him and his wife, Lucy. I think. <laughs> or Lucy might be the name of the first character. No, char- no you, was, character. you were very close. What's the name that sounds like Lucy? Juicy. Change the that change the vowels. J J So. The vowels. Laso. <laughs> <laughs> You're so close. Uh Lacey? Flip 'em. Lice. Lisa. 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 <laughs> Lisa. <laughs> Lisa. Lisa Joy. Yes. That, that was is, her name, right? Okay. Their uh, husband. <laughs> I read this article you, moments ago. Yeah. <laughs> you can't be the only one who's able to be on their phone and then be there so <laughs> smug like, I can't believe yeah. you guys yeah. don't know. Yeah. I said the words flip them. How was that not enough? <laughs> I know the answer after I mouthed the words while I was reading them. <laughs> uh, yeah. Le- they're a husband and wife team. They, yep. They've right. co-written this series and I think co-wrote a lot of Westworld. Um, and like are the executive producers and all that stuff. And then so Christopher pi- Nolan's sister-in-law. Correct. Yeah, please. Fantastic. Christopher <laughs> Nolan's sister-in-law was my father's wife. Yep. The... <laughs> <laughs> Not the so easy, actually. A lot, yeah. of on this, uh, <laughs> a lot of pressure on this son of John Nolan. I've mm. got the whole tree wrapped uh, in my head. Uh, the the showrunners are a couple of other people who were from other shows I recognise that I don't remember. Oh, there. okay. But they, uh, I think Nolan directed, maybe the two of them directed the first like three episodes or something. It's all stuff right. like that. Yep. And it goes into the vague story, which Todd Howard is in the article as well. Yes. Talking about how <laughs> he talks about it. Oh, I was pr- approached about Fallout every single day. He's yeah. seeing he's seeing Druckmann make the big mm. leap into being a into being a TV guy who's all of a Emmy sudden on the nominee. HBO podcast and yeah. thinking this could be me. Rubbing yeah. shoulders with everybody, mm. everyone's like, "Fuck, did he rub my shoulders?" If it's yep. Todd Howard, he's probably clipping through their shoulders <laughs> though. Yeah, yeah right. T posing nice. with the stars. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the first episode's going to come out with a few boom mics in shot, and then <laughs> yeah. you know, after yeah. a few months, they'll it'll be really boring, and they'll be like, "It's meant to be boring." <laughs> <laughs> replying to fucking comments. Did you see this? Yeah, Bethesda's been like replying to negative reviews. Oh, really? Mm. Which which is fucking pathetic, yeah. in my opinion. What what was it on? It was on Steam oh, Starfield. Or something. Yeah, it was it was about Starfield. Starfield. Because yeah. you know, anytime people are like, "Oh, this company are deleting negative comments off their page," it's like, yeah, they don't want negativity on their own. Mm. That I kind of go like, yeah, if you're getting on there and just flaming them, they can delete that off their page. But replying is like, yeah, it's like, is that that's worse? And who's in my mind. who's okayed this? Because it's not like it's not Todd Howard. It's someone working for their uh, community. Team or whatever, I guess. I so, guess. Yeah. Either way, uh, I mean, like, yeah, the the community teams of things like um, this is completely separate. But uh, one of the Gordon, I think, Kitchen Nightmares. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, the YouTube videos. Of if you want to hear us talk about that, get on the Patreon. We talk about it a lot last yep. week. Yeah, and Hell's Kitchen. I've been mm. watching that. Uh, the Patreon's a good time, I swear. Yeah. But the uh, the the YouTube channel for Kitchen Nightmares, all of the titles are like. Gordon slays in disgusting restaurant, <laughs> and it's all lowercase, and it's clearly someone is just like, <laughs> yeah. but it works. Like that's what people. Uh, I want to see the video yeah. of Gordon Ramsay himself walking into the office when whoever is in charge of the YouTube channel is <laughs> naming that clip yeah. and just absolutely lighting them up. No, it'd be good because it, it, like your social presence, your social media presence these days, it's good to be raw with yes. it. Like you want to be yes. crying into the camera. So, uh, so decent creative team behind this. By sure. The sounds of it. And uh, yeah, Howard talks about. About all the all the things they've had, and the difference with this one is that Nolan apparently came in and kind of got it, mm-hmm. and he was like, "I want to make a different, new, separate story. I don't want to do an adaptation of one of okay. the existing ones." Right, right. And this one will be considered canon within the the Fallout verse. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's um, cool. Yeah, but and, uh, <laughs> having said that, the story is a vault dweller has to leave and then finds out the world has gone to shit. Yeah. Yep. And uh, starring the star of Baby Billy's Bible Bonkers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Walton T. Baby Goggins. Baby Billy's Bible Bonkers. Baby Please. Billy's Bible Bonkers. An antagonistic uh, clever ghoul. Yes. Which, like the dinosaur in Jurassic Park. Oh, mm. yeah. The... Well, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some of those bottle caps. Well, come on now. <laughs> 
I like I'm not a Fallout fan, right. but fuck me dead, I'm a huge Goggins fan. So mm. maybe this is the this could be the end to the Fallout verse for me. It's a good role for him because there's sort of three main characters. There's uh, yes. Lucy is the person who comes out of right, the vault, right, 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 um, who's played by someone from Yellow Jackets, mm-hmm. and she's like been in a pretty privileged vault. Mm-hmm. They're all oh. rich, so they got to go in there, and she comes out with some emergency and she has to leave. And then there's a Brotherhood of Steel guy who is mm. described as like a squire. He's mm-hmm. very Brotherhood of Steely, which mm-hmm. they're all very kind of zealots. Yeah, big, yeah, yeah. Big armor. And Steely then Dan. Goggins <laughs> is uh, a ghoul, cowboy What's this guy. over here? Steely Dan? I wish you I could. Steely Dan? Uh, can, I, 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 can I recall one of their songs? I guess you, when you were stuck in that vault, you were reeling in the years. <laughs> sure. I guess. <laughs> I guess. That'll do. Dirty work? Dirty work could play over the credits. Yeah, thematically. yeah. Thematically. Why has no one cleaned up this town? It's all still got shit all over it, even though people live here. Do mm. some dirty work. That was always annoying about Fallout 4. Why haven't they cleaned up? It's all the fucking damn place. There's just metal on the ground. Pick mm. it up. You cut yourself. Um, maybe the show will go into the, If it's going to be yeah. canon, maybe they're going to finally explain. Maybe they've been holding out, being like, we couldn't really explain this in a game. <laughs> we got to wait for TV. Yeah. we got to wait for the gog. Off. Yeah. And yeah, he's, uh, he's like a cowboy ghoul sort of guy who um, they pulled back the amount of makeup they were going to do with the ghoul because right. in the article they're saying they wanted Walton Goggins to look hot. Yeah. Which is a very funny reason and I'm all for it. Yeah. Okay. I thought, it's interesting to me <laughs> I saw a screenshot. I... He looks uh, fine. He looks yeah. like the Red Skull from... Uh, he doesn't from, look hot though. Uh, well, we got different <laughs> tastes. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting to he me still that looks Goggins like he's is, dead. Uh, yeah. is, is, is considered hot because he's like mm. he's always playing such a little freak in everything he does. Yeah. Like in the shield, he's like just yeah. you know, I guess he's like little a charismatic guy, but he's mm. like little rat man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I can see it. Yeah. He's got his I mean, nose yeah. missing. Imagine what you could do with an extra hole. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. He's obviously yeah, he's very charismatic. And yeah, I I, I hope it's like a, a good chunky role for him because he's and yeah, like we were saying before the show, like not a lot of um, confidence in Prime developing this. The Boys is good. The Boys is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And that's uh, and obviously production studios are all different within yeah. one, right? Uh, you know, uh, uh, streaming service or whatever. So uh, my hopes aren't dashed. And I guess The Boys is the other example that it's like an auteur partnership overseeing it, mm-hmm. an adaptation again and, of. Yeah, of mm-hmm. yep. It, so we're we're also in this kind of weird middle ground point with video game adaptations where like there's been some runs on the board this mm. year for maybe the first time. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's been a run on the board. Well, I, I, like Last yeah, of Us, creatively and oh, yeah. commercially That's huge success. Yeah, yeah. Mario movie made a billion dollars. Like so. You know, in terms sure. of people going to see it, but yeah. creatively, you know, so that's like a weird one where it was successful enough in terms of people going to see it, but creatively, yeah. outside of the look of it, pretty bereft of any. So, but it is well, and this like weird midpoint of mm, like your twisted metals and your halo, and then all and the stuff that right. just kind of came and went. Yeah. Yeah. I did not hear a single thing about either of them. Mm. Mm. I I did I heard negativity about Halo for sure. Right. Yeah. Um, right. But Twisted Metal, I'm not surprised, kind of came and went because the series has yeah. not had a new entry in so long. But Halo, I would have thought, had a, I was surprising that there was just... I they, forgot that it had come out. Mm. They fucked it as an adaptation was the impression I got where they right. were like, okay, the Master Chief uh, like is naked now. He takes his helmet huh. off all the time. He's talking. You see his ass in the shower. Like, okay. really weird and this choice. Is a failure? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Mm. Crazy that you could fuck up the, like the most commonly drawn image of the Master Chief in the <laughs> yeah. world. Um, Did you guys see, by the way, that uh, there's been a lot in the last few months of um, people being in Japan and hanging out with our old friend Hideo Kojima. Mm. And, he, and because of like how he does things, mm. it's always so funny where it's like, is this just a link up based on mutual fandom or is this a work meeting? Right. Mm. You know, like, so Briggs was over in Japan <laughs> recently, right. <laughs> the Australian rapper. <laughs> yeah. And he was hanging out with Hideo Kojima and it's I like, seen any this is going to be insane if if indigenous rapper Briggs shows up in the world of Death Stranding 2. Yeah. yeah. In there. It could happen. Yeah. Chalamet was just hanging out with him recently. I mean, there's Fuck. a million spots for, you know, your delivery mm. subjects 
to pop up, like Conan oh, O'Brien. Like Conan, did. Yeah, yeah, Conan yeah. didn't really register. Well, it was kind of weird, but it's like it was really it was super weird, weird. But it's like, well, that's the that's the precedent. You know what I mean? So right. it's not strange to have Briggs. You I know, think it would turn s- up and do a rap at you. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it would be bad, but I want him to do it. That yeah. every one of those people you're delivering to is some famous person who he wanted to sure. fucking yeah. sniff behind their head. <laughs> yeah, for sure. What I'm imagining him doing every yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. It's cool. I mean, if you like, I'm trying to think who else has been there recently. Jordan Peele was like a little while ago. Oh, yeah. They were hanging out. Wish I could get out. <laughs> All right, thanks for the package. Bye. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, well, he's got to get... I mean, if he's got Jordan Peele in there, Jordan yeah. Peele mostly doing stuff behind the camera these days. Mm-hmm. So if he's going to have Jordan Peele in the game, he's got to get Keegan-Michael Key in there. Oh, yeah, do absolutely. a little sketch in a bunker. Yeah. I said, bitch, <laughs> thank you for the package. Little, little, little toad. That. Little yeah. toad man. Key himself. Little yeah. crossover. Get he everybody. Should, yeah. Yeah. Every single famous person make Death Stranding too terrible. Yeah, <laughs> I would love that. He genuinely. tries to do like a Smash Brothers Ultimate. Everyone is here, but by that he means every every, every celebrity, <laughs> literally every celebrity. Yeah, okay. Uh, the, so what was I saying? The 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 other thing about the show was uh, something or other. But it looked a little, yeah, it, it it could be fine. I I hope that it's all right. I like yeah. watching good things, and I'm yeah. gonna watch it either way probably. I think it's a good enough premise for yeah that could work outside of having an attachment to the to the games mm. it's like it's very people like that kind of stuff now they're like yeah you're in a bunker and the world's been destroyed i mean that's but why last of us kind of worked is because it's a I, like i was skeptical about maybe we were at oversaturation mm. with that kind of theme but yeah it's like it's easy for people to pick up who haven't played the games it's like well, yeah it's again obvious. this is a similar theme but they ha- they talk yeah. about how they want to get the mixture of dramatic and comedic right like it is in the games too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Famous guess, uh, funny movie writer, mm, Christopher Nolan's brother. Yeah. yeah. That is that is one thing that it probably will be compared to Last of Us just because of that setting. I yeah. think one of the showrunners was from The Office now that we talk about comedy stuff and like oh, a dear. couple of other comedy shows maybe. Um, I didn't read the article actually, but I do believe that <laughs> that's what she said. So <laughs> I don't, yeah. Hell interesting, yeah. interesting mix. I like, yeah. I, yeah, I liked Westworld. It was quite ambitious. It was, it had that sort of lost, you know, Lindelof vibe mm. to it, but I f- feel like it got a bit up its own ass. I was yeah. meant to go in and then I heard that there was a big Peter off and then didn't mm. it, it just kind of ended like it, it never got to wrap things up, right? It got cancelled. No, it got to season seven. Yeah, it got to season seven in a movie. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> no, I think yeah, they were. That's why I have five in my head because people were like, "Oh, we'll never get a season five right. and get the ending of it." Yeah, Deadwood right. style, right? Kind of. Yeah, cut, yeah, yeah. Cut before they got to wrap it up. Yeah, um, they did end up wrapping it up. Yeah. Have a look at that article. The screenshots are interesting. Yeah, it definitely has a look to it, which. It'll be really interesting to see what that what how that comes across in motion because yeah. uh, again like it like he's pointed out it's a different production team mm. but the way that when they've gone for it with like production stuff costumes wheel of time was awful yeah. like literally looked like a episode of Power Rangers at points the and then the fucking Lord of the Rings one the Lord of the Rings really looked like a like a cardboard mm. paper mache set off totally totally was that this which year I think last year okay. yeah. A billion dollars. <laughs> it's so weird. And it was like, you might as well have filmed it in one room with bad CGI and costume shop costumes. Yeah. Yep. It, it, and then it had like, you know, some shots that were like big sweeping vistas mm. and, you know, some bits, but then just the there were shots in back alleys and stuff like that that fucking look like shit. And mm. just like the wigs and stuff. There's just something where maybe it's like the lighting. I think it's often like mm. how it's treated with through the film the medium of film but yep. i don't know it, yeah so like the brotherhood of steel costume i was a bit like that you can tell that's kind of like you know light hollow rubber and well, shit like is, that yeah the hard thing if you're if if you're attached enough to the if you're familiar enough with the source material it already has that hard thing to get over of feeling like it's people cosplaying yeah. as these characters yeah. from this thing. All of the Star Wars shows, even though they were movies, yeah. have sort of had that. I think when they started introducing characters who were in the animated shows mm. into the live action shows, yep. they always, to me, have looked really silly and weird. Right. Well, the One Piece live adaptation. And it's it's cool that they went, let's not, let's not do like a gritty version of this. Let's yes. make it look like the comics look. I appreciate that. I think that's like an interesting creative mm. move. Mm. 
But the problem with it is, is that the whole time you're watching it, you're like, this is people pretending. <laughs> like it's <laughs> yeah. it's really hard to like yeah. lose yourself in the world of it because it's yeah. like that's just. That just doesn't look like a real person in any way. Yeah, if you end up with like Batman and Robin fall out. Exactly. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But mm. I, it's it, there's no moving footage of it yet. Yeah. Just like five or six still Stills frames. Mm-hmm. With the big Vanity Fair exclusive watermarks oh, yeah. slapped over the top. I think in, an, in a 21 by 9 uh, um, uh, aspect ratio too. Oh, like a yeah, yeah. Cinematic widescreen. Yeah, that's that Nolan touch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they filmed it all in IMAX. I need it wider, <laughs> wider. <laughs> Make him look hot, <laughs> sir. <laughs> we can't. Uh, yeah. I reckon Nolan. I reckon we'll live to see Nolan build his own cinema. I reckon he's looking at the <laughs> yeah, sphere okay. in Las Vegas, Ooh. a purpose-built thing where it's oh. like the stuff that's in there can only be in there, and yeah. thinking, now this is the dream. Him and Scorsese team up. They build their own cinema. Mm-hmm. You sit down and you get like locked into the seats, <laughs> Clockwork Orange style. Sure, it's eleven and, it's and a <laughs> half hours. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And the uh, the screen is like the size of you know a football field. Yeah. Fuck. yeah. Now you can really see the size of a building. All of the women characters we couldn't figure out how <laughs> yes, to write. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, so yeah, Fallout's coming out April next year. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see the. Aftermath from that Nice That's only like a month away right April Uh, Honestly it will seem like that By the time Mm. we're in April Yeah Uh, Speaking of April (laughs) We'll be doing shows then Oh sure Should we say that Oh yes Fuck Uh, it Well tickets aren't on sale yet anywhere Yeah yeah yeah. Are they Yeah (laughs) Like we haven't uh, published the link yet But yes the tickets are set up Uh, It exists if you look for it If Mm. we put the link in the description Um, We are doing three shows during the month of April, mm-hmm. three Sundays, uh, 3 p.m. at the Cooper's Inn. Yep. Yeah. The three Sundays that will be after the Easter weekend. That right? is correct. Yes. As during, as part of the Melbourne International Comedy Festival. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, we've, yeah. we've paid our rego. That's right. Let's put it out there. We're officially, <laughs> finally allowed in. Yep. Um, yeah. They'll be separate to the podcast. They'll be like special live shows. Uh, we won't be able to stream them like we have previously no No. we might do something with them but maybe not as well we'll we'll let you know at the time but we the thing we definitely will do is do the show for the people there (laughs) yes fulfill the obligation to people (laughs) who've paid for tickets um exceed the obligation absolutely and we'll have guests yes it's gonna be fun come down we've done pax which is a video games festival yeah and now we're doing a comedy festival and we're we're going to compare them, and <laughs> whichever one we think is best, we will jettison the topic of the other one from this podcast forever. The result, <laughs> both bad. <laughs> uh, we're doing this thing. Uh, we stole the idea from um, a podcast called The Little Dum Dum Club. I don't know if you guys have heard of it, mm. but you can. You, we're selling um, like a discounted season pass. So if you, I think it's twenty five bucks per show, or if you pay sixty buckaroonies, you get access to all three shows. Like Tommy said, they'll be guests on them it'll be different content each time it's not just the podcast yeah um, so we and highly encourage that <laughs> to be clear i d- as far as i know i don't believe that the little dum-dum club invented the idea of the season no pass. you yeah. guys came before baseball right yeah <laughs> i'm pretty sure <laughs> yeah that's, that's what i've been hearing <laughs> that'll all we'll have a link in the description then yes and uh, that's all in auds too so it might not be as bad as it sounds yes uh speaking of auds Take out the U mm. and you get the word ads. Oh. So several mm-hmm. of which shoo, 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 shoo up. <laughs> I was about to say he's on fire today. And then <laughs> Ra, Ra, I was like, no, I'll wait until he says this next I've drunk yeah. just the right amount of caffeine for me to feel real weird. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you would feel real weird too if you were playing, I believe it was in Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Valhalla. Oh, yes. That um, over the last week or so, some people got fed brief whole screen ads when they went from gameplay into the map Mm. uh ads for assassin's creed mirage that ubisoft have since said like it was a bug those ads were meant to show up but in like the the title screen which is something that a bunch of games have done many times already is is have the big like call of duty has (laughs) call of duty i've been playing modern warfare 3 it's given me ads for modern warfare 3 in modern warfare 3 right and a lot of times there'll be like a button on the home screen that's like 
you know, if there's downloadable content, it's like, hey, go to the store and you can buy some stuff here. Old totally. games will have a message being like, the sequel's out. That happens right. all the time. Um, and it is a big, it's like one of Ubisoft's big thing. It's in all of their games. It yeah. has like, yeah, buy this DLC, buy this costume. It's always like, yeah, right there. The reason they have like seven menus, it's like each one has a different ad in it. Yep. Uh, but this bug, they're calling it, which I believe they didn't intend for it to go out. Mm. Was was to to serve those ads when transitioning from gameplay to menu while you're playing the game, and it's impossible to know. Mm. And this is only speculation. And look, I don't know anything about game development, but I do know a thing or two about speaking out of turn. <laughs> and <laughs> I think that that's something they were trying out internally. Yeah, and it accidentally got pushed. Mm-hmm. This idea mm. of having things go uh, ads appear in game. Yep. Which has happened, ads have been delivered in game, in a pl- plenty of games before. They've been shown in like a bunch of the NBA games and things like that. You've oh, yeah. served yeah. a ton of ads. So it's not like it's them coming up with this thing. And it's not like it's crazy for them to internally try things out mm-hmm. and test responses and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. But I think they've got their response to this, which yeah. is a fucker you, yeah. be soft. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, yeah, all that stuff. Like ads in a in an NBA game, you know, you, it's like sport is littered with ads, so there's a bit more of a precedent there. But like, I can understand being frustrated by the the broken immersion of oh, I'm in this world and I'm opening the map. Oh, and now I'm being given an ad for mm-hmm. the net. You know, pressing like, pause and getting an ad. That yeah, there are just there are going to be walls that they can only push so far up against. Mm. Yeah, because it's like destroying. Yeah, it's taking you out. That's the main thing. If yeah. it takes you out of the experience when you're like, yeah, happy to get an ad on the main screen. I'm not happy. <laughs> to well, I don't love it. But when it you know. It's like how they're all on the bottom of fucking like smart TVs and shit now. Like, nah, right. dude, I fucking bought yeah. this full thing. Mm. It's not a magazine where part of the cost is... It's subsidised, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. It's a fucking television. Yeah, no. This is a full price video game. We've got established ways of doing this mm-hmm. and I refuse to ever change. <laughs> <laughs> and they, I mean, there's there are microtransactions in those games. There are there are other ways that they're already, you know, they're um, snipping at you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. that 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 is just one that I think is really pushing it. A bit yes. And so did yeah. everyone. And there was another one recently where uh, Xboxes were giving people full page ads when they turned on their Xbox for I think it was for Call of Duty. Right. That oh, okay. only happened for some people in some places. But again, something that they're, you know, just fucking. Just poking you with, yeah. see, see yeah. how people respond. It's and hard that, to again, find that balance because, like, it. a lot of people, like, we're pretty tapped into when things are coming out and what's happening, but a lot of people don't keep up to the same extent. The you know the switch has that little kind of news thing mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's sort of always online. That when you when you uh, wake up the console, it's got like the little sort of headlines on the like unlock screen that'll just say like you know, whatever, oh, hey, Mario Wonders out now. And you just look at that for a few seconds while you push the button three times to unlock the console. That's kind of the fine version of it. You know, I think like it's sneaking in there. But the problem with that is that then that starts to lose its impact because people tune out to that. So then it's like, well, we need to find a new way of inserting this in. All Mm. of those dashboards have had ads served to you for ages. But it's the big... You've got to sit at it for a second. It's you, it takes a bit to skip it. Full screen. Nah, you wait for me to show yeah. you this. Yeah, yeah. That's a separate type of uh, really annoying. Mid game is is rough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah. And Surely it's, it's not I, free. It's put like, it on a billboard in the game. Just be walking around in Valhalla. <laughs> yeah. There's just a big billboard on top of a hut that says Assassin's Creed Mirage. We yeah. should have talked about this a, a little bit later because it's fine for ads to subsidize a free product. <laughs> yeah. You'll find out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, like, that's that's just how things work. All, yeah. al- almost all art is actually just you are working for an advertiser. Mm. That's where every TV show makes its money. Yep. That's uh, anything that you're not directly paying for. Right. Either it's HBO, you're, you're getting donations from patrons. Yeah. Or you're getting ad money. Well, this every is the problem, TikTok like- account is some fun comedy character six months later telling you to shop at Coles. <laughs> da Vinci was paid by, you know, some other person. They used to have patrons. Yeah. They, yeah. And, yeah. and we do too. Like that, it, there's lots of normal ways to make money from art. Well, there and was this like golden yeah, era of like 
oh, everything's changing. So you can just sell your thing direct to the people who yeah. want it yeah. and cut out the middleman and cut out a network and cut out advertisers. And it's a great idea in principle. But I think what most people discovered from that is that, by and large, people are pretty cheap. <laughs> <laughs> and they'd rather just get the thing for free. Therefore, yeah. ads exist. And it's just, there's just... And it's it's one of those things. What it's like the definite. There's, I think it's about porn that people say this. Okay, you might be wondering where I'm going. Mm. Uh, that there's no real way to define what it is, but you know it when you see it. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah you yeah. know. Yes. And that's that's the same with like egregious advertising, where yep. different people have different tolerances and stuff and whatever. But there's some pretty across the board. A lot of people will go, oh nah. Well, we saw. And that's one. I think I know how to describe porn, by the way. How? If I see a penis go into a vagina. Well, but that could be an educational film. Is that pornography? What educational film are you being shown in school where... I I went to a weird school, <laughs> but no, no, they're, they're, you know it could be a medical film that people need to yeah, learn yeah, about okay. in university. It could be I don't know if you see it in sex ed, but it, that would not be a crazy place to see it. Do you know? Right? There's some things you can't that... describe it, but if you can come to it, it's porn. <laughs> well, again, <laughs> then every episode of Scooby Doo is yeah. porn. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we we saw uh, the microtransaction thing hit a threshold, like you say, with Battlefront. One or two? two? Two. Where everyone, every consumer, you know, every 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 gaming fan was like, no, that's egregious, that's too far. Mm. Yeah. It got pulled back. It's weird back. how game, the gaming industry is so big now, but it is still new enough that these things aren't regulated. Like, mm. having read a couple of books recently about the, like, 90s, eight, late 80s, 90s boom of video games, and there was a point where they went, oh, these things aren't rated, so we should establish... A rating board for this, right, like, like that we have like, for movies, and mm. it's like, how did that not exist? And same with like, oh, it was Mortal Kombat and shit. And it's yeah, like, there's no rating for toys, and people saw it as a toy. You yeah. know, like you don't get an MA on your on your on your Ninja Turtle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so mature that I can't think of a toy. Any ads in that book? No. Mm. The perfect medium. <laughs> <laughs> well, other than you know, the one I just read recently is all about the game Doom. And it oh. did like midway through it. I was like, I should download Doom. So I guess you know, <laughs> and all did kind of work on me. Or not all, but like most of the big companies, at the very least, all big companies, I would say, mm. uh, in in this realm, are always pushing it a little bit. Like with with games and all those ways you talked about with TV shows that you sometimes get the product placement where like right. there was that one on like an episode of Hawaii Five O where the guy's like, man, I love this Subway sandwich. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. put down your delicious Subway sandwich and let's solve this crime. Yeah. That's and funny like, too because you have the common thing of like. A, yeah, a character drinking a can of Coke and they make sure that the mm. label is like perfectly facing the or camera. Or like every yeah. every Sony Pictures film in the <laughs> in the two, I'm going to say 2000s, they all use Sony Veo laptops and oh, it was, yeah. the logo was right. always yeah. like facing the camera. I was listening to a, a podcast that's uh, called This Is Important and it's all the Workaholics guys and they talk about I forget what the brand is, but they had an episode of that show where there's someone in the office that's like obsessed with like, it's something like No Sugar Dr. Pepper or something like right. that. Right. Just because they thought it was funny and they talk about how they got so Mr. much. Mr. Pepper. <laughs> they got so <laughs> much hate from it because people thought this is such egregious product placement. Oh, wow. And they're like, we got no money from it. We just <laughs> thought it was like a funny product and wanted to put it in. Mm. Stupid of us. We probably could have tried to get some money from them. Yeah. But like that funny thing where it's like, is this, sometimes you look and it's like, now is this in here because it just works as a mm. thing or have they taken a little kickback? Yeah. yeah. In the killer Recently, we yeah. saw, and it's a very Fincher thing to include real brands, but it was like he talks about McDonald's all the time. Yep. Fight Club is that you know famous IKEA scene. It's yep. like, yep. is this because it's culturally relevant, like you say, or is there a little bit of moolah changing yeah. hands? And mm. like, would they depend, like, given what those two films are about, mm. would they, you know, would they be like, yeah, great, let's yeah. be associated with this? Yeah. Very like violent and. Nihilist <laughs> film. Mm. A company has uh, an obligation to its shareholders to make money, so it makes sense that they'd always be thinking about this and trying this. Yep. And then also they will lose money if they do stuff mm. like this or so they get pushed back on. Yeah. So you know, it, everyone seems to be mad at it. So hopefully it won't continue to happen. Mm. People can only be pushed so far. I mean, you know, as long as the product makes sense with like the the piece of content it's in the middle of, uh, and it makes sense to the the audience, then yep. there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. 
Dragon's Dogma 2 is uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, just before we do we do do that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they they just that that big March game that Capcom were yeah. talking about. It yep. is Dragon's Dogma 2. It's right. on the twenty second of March. Mm-hmm. They put out a thing with the with the release date, which in retrospect I feel ridiculous being like it's Monster Hunter when Dragon's yeah. Dogma 2 was being talked about, getting <laughs> hyped up, yeah. out on the plate, like ready to go. They had like the yeah. anniversary thing. Was that not what it was like? Something. About about the first one the a couple of months ago. They've done some stuff and then there was a Monster Hunter anniversary thing. Some right. stuff about that too. Right. And then that is in March, the actual anniversary of that. They should uh, have done the announcement right. for the new Monster Hunter at the end of Tar. That would have been cool. Oh, yeah. You love talking about <laughs> I love talking Monster about, Hunter and Tar. I love talking about the fact that Monster Hunter's in Tar. <laughs> yeah. It is pretty it's good. It's really funny. Yeah. It's funny that it shows up and it's also funny because it has the credits, the full credits are at the start of the movie and they play in reverse to give a bit of respect to the the below-the-line people. Mm. And so the things that always show up at the very end of credits are just like the... The licensing. This product has been... Yeah. So literally the first thing that you see is Monster Hunter is the property of Capcom. (laughs) So you're like, what the hell? (laughs) How is... So the whole time I'm just waiting for someone to be like on a plane playing it on a Switch or something. But no, it's a... And it comes up right at the end. Yeah, and that would have been the great, a great moment for Kate Blanchett to turn to the camera and be like, the new Monster Hunter <laughs> will be launching worldwide. <laughs> it is cool that that's bookended by Monster Hunter. Yeah. 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 Dragon Dogma 2 out next year. That's the March game. Right. It's all out in the open. Yep. They've uh, admitted it. Finally. I've I played the first one like recently, like not at the time, and it, it, it didn't hold up, um, but... Like, it's an interesting world. It's an interesting, like, having a, another alternate, like, big fantasy franchise that is mm. good and current and, like, yep. you know, current gen. I'm I'm curious. I, I was a Dragon's Age? Dragon Age. Yeah. Big Dragon Age fan, and that kind of fell off for me. I heard some people talk about uh, trying to do the OG Alan Wake in anticipation of yeah. the second one coming out and sort of having the same thing, being like... Little of its time, kind of yeah. hard to get around, and you then may have heard like that from me. You. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, and then loving too. So it could be a similar thing with uh, with that, where it's like this yeah. is sort of the the real introduction for a lot of people. People really love Dragon's Dogma, but also even at the time when it came out, it was one of those ones where some people just couldn't get into it. Too. Right, so it may have been one of them at the time. Yeah, as well. yeah. I, I want to give it a go over the over the holidays uh, in anticipation for two. Mm. You know what I've been given a go recently? What another old game? Okay. It's from okay. 2014. You didn't uh, wait. You didn't play the big major release of the last seven days. Uh, what would that have been? I don't think there was. <laughs> <one>. <laughs> yeah. There was no new game. I played, uh, which is fine. The yeah. prequel to a major release of the previous couple of months. They put out the Talos Principle two, right? Not that long ago, and I ain't doing no two before I know what's up with one. Mm. Yeah, I'm just wired that way. Yeah, mm-hmm. so you take sue your me. piss. I and love God. I love family, <laughs> and I love sequential order. <laughs> uh, so, the Talos principle. Yes, is, is it Talos or Talos? I haven't heard anyone say it out loud. Loud, I don't think they uh, probably do. When in the you game. When Talos, you, ta- ta- when you go to yeah. a Chinese restaurant and everything's on the menu is numbered. Yeah. Do, I have are you uh, never able to get anything more than just water, like, green tea? <laughs> it's a long day for me. Plain rice. Well, the drinks are always at the back too, so oh, I yeah. leave there thirsty. Yeah, you leave fuck. there thirsty. You're not having salt. dessert. <laughs> yeah, you're probably struggling to even get into a main. At yeah. best, you might be able to get an appetizer. But in. fourteen yeah. entrees. Yeah, it's all right. That's one big main. Yep, a lot more expensive. It's <laughs> uh, one big main. I played the Talos principle. The yeah. tail. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Talos. I think. I feel like I think it's a Greek word and yeah. I forget what the definition of it is but it's something to do with how can you know you're a person or something I'm going to look it up oh. <laughs> then he'll pretend he nice. knew it <laughs> it's pronounced Lisa <laughs> uh, it is a uh, puzzle game made by and I didn't realise this until I started playing it the people who made Serious Sam oh really it's Crow yeah. Team uh, and it's it's a sort of it's a first person, uh, move things around. You can make it third person, move things around a sort of maze. You get little different puzzle objects as you go through the game, mm-hmm. like uh, reflector posts that will allow you to move like a beam of light from one place to another. God, to I love m- a bit of that. Mm. Love yeah. a bit of that in Tears of the Kingdom, getting my little fucking mirror. Activating a couple of light, yeah. light activated switches, yeah. which... I don't know if that's a thing that it's ever existed oh. in the room, but video games love them. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I wonder. You can sense light, I suppose. Yeah. Um, like some some um, 
boxes and, and things of that nature, and you'll have switches and locked doors. And I think um, I played this. You may well have done. It's ten years old, nearly now. So you may have uh, gotten around to it, and it Are does. You Googling look at to me. find out whether you played it. Yes, <laughs> has been played. <laughs> Tell us I have not. <laughs> okay. Um, it's it's really fun. The right. the puzzles are uh, um, well thought out, and they increase at a steady clip in in complexity. You're only given maybe four ish sort of tools that you end up using even by the end of the game. So it's maybe four or five. So it gives you time to wrap your head around each of them and then they all interact in different and interesting ways that make get you to think pretty creatively mm-hmm. um, throughout these puzzles. There's sort of seven worlds of maybe five puzzles between, uh, I think, three different sort of stages, three or four stages. So okay. 40, 50-ish mm-hmm. maybe. So I don't, I, I'm sure I've done the wrong maths there, but a, fa- a good number. 35? A, no, because then it's times three. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. So, so 120 all up, probably. Something nice. like that. Uh, that feel really satisfying to solve and like have enough of those moments where you're like, how the fuck is this even possible? Right. Notice something about it. Think differently about one of the elements. You go, oh, I'm dumb as shit, dude. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's all kind of uh, laid on top of this pretty... Um, done but here done interestingly at least story about like you know you're an ai or a robot or something so what's a person and what is this world and some sort of um you this know is the kind of shit that i love <laughs> as a free thinker <laughs> as a fan of the matrix yeah. <laughs> if you're into this sort of philosophical shit man yeah you know why i thought i played this why because i played a s- similar game called the turing test it right. is a physics-based puzzle game, portal-ish series of rooms. It's about moving things and activating switches. Yeah, and it's like I don't. I think maybe you're a human, but you're interacting with an AI, and it's like, how much free will does the AI have? Yeah. Is it going bad? Is it got you know? It's very, yeah, a lot of crossover. There are a few that kind of came out that are similar types of puzzle games around this time, like this, that one. Uh, like the witness kind of falls yeah. into yep. it. All of those kind of all the portal inspired ones, right? I guess Especially so, the yeah. robot-y sort of shit. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, you're kind of reading um, like emails and texts and stuff like that on this computer network okay. that you're interacting with as you go. I can do that. Out. You've done it before. I uh, frequently, yeah. But not like this. Oh. Not think of anything worse. <laughs> Wait, do I have to reply? No, you can't because all the people oh. are uh, <laughs> heaven. We don't know where they are. <laughs> yeah, but okay. Okay. maybe they're. The definite thing that they obviously are right from the start, sci-fi dead. Yeah. And the world is ended. Oh, that's okay. all. They're, they're very yeah. quickly talking about like, oh, the disease is getting worse. And right. Oh, I think right. this would just like depress me that this isn't real life. <laughs> 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 well, it's pretty. So uh, I had a good time with it. Mm, it's cool. um, uh, like not super long, maybe 10 to 15 hours type of thing. And then there's like a DLC called The Road to Ghana that um, you've got to say. Jerry like Lewis. Too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, the similar thing and then ramps up the difficulty of the puzzles and um, adds sort of a new twist on the terminals thing that I really liked, which is like all of the AIs kind of in this world all talking on forums to each other because they're all like locked in these cells that you're releasing them from. So they've had this whole you know eternity to have this like forum culture and there's one asshole on the forums and so on. Only one? Only one in this that you you only need one as a, as an indicator. Um, I feel like by that by after eternity, everyone would be no. everyone would be evil. Nah, they're most They'd of all be them, radicalized. Most of them are writing fun little stories and making like text adventure games that you get oh, to nice. play in there. Cool. It's it's a fun like creative time. I don't think it's doing anything super like um, out of the box necessarily, mm-hmm. but. Uh, it, it, you can probably picture what it feels like to play because mm. there have been a bunch of things similar to it. Mm-hmm. The way that the story is presented is a lot like your horizons and whatever, where right. you're kind of interacting with the past and the present and all of that stuff. But um, it, it's it's pretty good. And uh, I have nothing to say about the second one because playing this has <laughs> made me have my fill. I was yeah, going to yeah. say, yeah. Are you gonna <laughs> so, And the second one came out this year. The second one came out like a month or two ago. Yeah, right. Okay. Mm. Uh, I do want to get around to that, but uh, maybe not straight away because I had the same thing mm. doing the doing the portal games for the yeah. first time ever when they dropped on the Switch last year, mm. and did one, powered through one, and then went, oh great, and I hear two's even better. So now and like 
got a bit into it, but it was just like, you know, even though it is, it, you know, it's improved in a lot of ways, but it's like, I've just done a huge slab of this. I'm going to yeah. take a little rest for yeah. a bit. Yeah. 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 It, it's, it's worth having a look at though. And uh, I think you get it for either free or cheap in a bundle if you buy two as well. Yeah. I was going to say, I think I'll get, I'll give two a crack. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think you would need, honestly, having now gone through... Because I saw, without knowing anything about what the story was, people saying, like, oh, the story is a really key part of it. Which it is. Like, it's there and it's in. I was engaged by it and enjoyed reading it. It's mostly delivered through reading and then you've got, like, one kind of voice who's talking to you. Right. Um, so knowing that the story was a part of it is why I wanted to start with one. But honestly, I think with you could with what this story does you would be able to infer all of it if you've ever sure. seen a sci-fi movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm sure they do a little bit of, of catching up at the start. Almost but, certainly. Yeah. And it, like in two, you might see a name or two where you're like, oh, he's from the forums. Oh, the guy. Right. I don't know. But um, yeah, you could almost certainly start with two, I okay. would imagine. Because also I, there's inevitably going to be that thing. I enjoyed how the puzzles ramp up in difficulty. I thought it was really, really well paced out. And you, you constantly write it pretty much constantly right at like the limit of what you're uh, what what is challenging for you mm. yep. based on what you've done before and then the Gehenna thing takes it up even further where some of them are really like you've got to break the rules that you thought you knew man right mm-hmm. um, I'm all about that dude I love it in my opinion <laughs> Uh, the revolution will not be televised. <laughs> like the only slogan I could think of. Um, so that will inevitably kind of reset, s- yeah. step back a, a bit for the second one. Sure. I assume in the second one they've got new tools and all that sort of stuff. So yep. you'll be learning new stuff. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll let you know one day, <laughs> probably in 10 years. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, it's weird that it does look, he, it's in there, the serious engine, which right. serious yeah, Sam yeah. ran. And so it looks like serious Sam, mm. which is so strange. Just a shift in tone from like, ah, shooter to, <laughs> hmm. Oh, <laughs> to computers are people. Oh, yeah. I wonder what it means. Is determinism uh, correct? Mm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. I've been playing, uh, I've been playing more of uh, Mario RPG. I mm. think I'm getting, I'm just near the end of it. Um, Really loving it. It's it's funny how like it, it is an old game, unchanged, but there is something about it that because it moves at such a rapid clip that it almost does feel new. It almost feels like a response to like a modern response to like how bloated modern JRPGs can be and right. how long they take to get you into it. Like I'm loving just knowing that it is like roughly 12 hours and it just like races along. It throws a couple little wrinkles in there it gets going really quickly like that genre of game can be so sort of drawn out sometimes that like yeah weirdly it does almost feel like it's it's been made as a response to like hey let's just make one that you can just bet you know i know exactly what you mean with like th- this is a strange compare but like Speaking of Jerry Lewis, if you ever go back and watch like <laughs> what are the, the odds, the, the, <laughs> yeah. like the Colgate Comedy Hour, oh yeah, it almost looks postmodern now because yeah. we've moved so far away from what right. that was that we've lost some of the positive aspects of it too that work. Yep, and so that vaudeville thing is right. so in the other direction with comedy now, or yeah. it was ten years ago maybe. Yeah, like the the. It can be refreshing to go back and Mario RPG. I mm. have the same feeling. It's yeah, nice, yeah, I like um, I you know, it's it's got it's all the sort of stuff that is not just in this game, but is sort of a bit of a trope of the genre. Like it's very grindy. It's very like right. you're in a town, then you're in like a dungeon slash wild area, then you're doing a boss. But the yeah, but the the coat of paint that's on it and the package that it's in is just. I like I've been having like a very busy, stressful couple of weeks, and it's just been a really great pick up as a little break for like half an hour you know what you're gonna get the combat like the boss combat is like challenging enough without being punished it's like the right level of challenging where you feel like you've employed a good strategy for having done it i haven't really had to restart any boss fights or anything like that but yeah i'm kind of just clipping through it and like i'm finding the mechanic of the learning the timings of the um combat stuff really satisfying when mm. you get in a groove with that and then like the blocking of different attacks is also really hard to learn but when you get that down you just you feel 
Because if you block an attack properly, you take zero damage. So if you get to a point where you're going through a round and like literally not taking any impact, it you just really do feel like, oh, I'm playing this like an absolute machine. Mm. It's kind of funny how like because the combat is so low stakes, like it is easy. Yeah. It makes the timing thing more fun as a result because you're not like pissed off if you miss it. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. You don't need to do you, – yeah, exactly. You can – and frequently – like, because all the timings of the enemy attacks are so different and so specific and kind of hard to memorize, even if you have seen them before, it's not like I'm now just automatically doing that every time in every battle. Mm-hmm. It's actually, I can do the attack timing pretty much consistently. Every time I defense, change a weapon, yeah, I completely forget that I've done it. Takes you a few goes. I get com- flummoxed yeah. by the turtle shell suddenly so yeah cooper shell <laughs> suddenly showing up they're turtles but yeah there's nice little <laughs> something i would be mad about if someone else got it wrong. <laughs> but because i got it wrong it doesn't matter it's fine but there's so many nice little touches like one of bowser's uh attacks that you get is like he'll pick up mario and lob him as mm. a projectile like it's yeah it's i'm yeah i'm really really enjoying it as a yeah like a nice little condensed version of an RPG where, like, even around that era, I feel like they were starting to get a bit sort bloated. Of started to get pretty bloated, mm. and, and and yeah, but it's um, it's it's yeah, it's great. It's just rocketing along, and you you know you're on this, the the sort of thrust of the game is you're on this quest to get these seven different star pieces, and it it'll show you on the pause screen how many you've got, and show you an ad. No ads. Hey. Yet, okay. Yeah. Um, okay. They did used to call it the Colgate I was, comedy. I hour. was going to say if that yeah. came. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We, again, we've come full circle. <laughs> uh, things are moving back and forth all the time. Yeah. It's cool to live. But it, it'll bring up the number of star pieces that you've got. And I was kind of surprised. Like I was playing it the other day, and I was surprised to see like, oh, I've got six out of the seven. Like you know what I mean? It right. just kind of like snuck up on me. Like because there's all these bits where you go to a bit. I'd and have known. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have been pausing constantly. I'd have remembered exactly how many I had. I'd have known at five. Like. <laughs> It's coming Getting next. The end. <laughs> you get to the, you get to a, you go to a place where there's supposedly one, and it's not that. So you know there are a lot of like right. running around to do different things, and all of a sudden I was like, oh right, I'm getting near the end. Mm. Cool, I'm nearly finished this game, and like, yeah, it hasn't. It's not overstaying its welcome at all. There's no like, you know, it does have, yeah. There's definitely some things of its time a little bit. It's got this bit where you are in a dungeon, and there's six rooms. And two of them are like action platform challenges. Two of them are combat and two of them are puzzle room challenges. And you, you kind of go into them and you don't know which one's going to be which. And the action platforming things are like it's sort of getting you to do this stuff that's like some sort of precise platforming that because of the like isometric angle and the fact that you haven't really been doing this all that much over the mm. game, it does feel a bit like fidgety, but it's fine. You can sort of... You know, muddle your way through it. And if you, you get like 10 sort of lives in that bit and if you lose them all, you just reset back to out the start of the room. Like mm. it doesn't really penalise you too much. So there are some little things like that where if you were, you know, if you were retooling it, you might maybe rethink that, but it doesn't feel too like, oh, this is a slog. Right. But yeah, I'm, I'm really having a good time with it. Mm. I had a, fo- a, a proper full grin show up on my face because you said the word penalize. Yeah. <laughs> I, I saw and I knew exactly why. And okay. I was like, if he interjects to say something Penis? about genitals. I, I knew that it wasn't important. I just like, I can't get away with it because we filmed these. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got to have full disclosure. Yeah, that's uh, why. Uh, nice. I've been playing, uh, ironically or fittingly enough, um, an old JRPG that... Could have used a bit more tweaking. I've been playing Like a Dragon Ishin. Oh, yeah. Uh, I really, like, I started it when it came out and got a couple of hours in and it felt a, a little bit daunting. It is like a big, long version of these games. Like, you like know, most all of them. them are. Takes ages to get going. Yeah, absolutely. And like a little too many story bit flips and flops where I was a bit like, oh, wait, what? what I, I've got to be engaged to fully, mm. you know, stay with it. Um, and I've gone back in and I'm kind of just powering through the main storyline and it's good. It's classic sort of yak is a, you know, melodrama and, oh, this guy's shown up from before and now he's a bat, you know, all that kind of stuff. 
I th- uh, the combat's just a little bit dated. It feels like, right. like mm. I, it's close to sort of that Ghost of Tsushima style, where it's like, you know, it's up to you to be pointing in the right direction, but like literally, like you know, on a three D axis, like you've got to be doing this. If you're not fully facing them and you block, it's not going to work. If you dodge and you, it's uh, and like rather than say locking on when you hold, you know, R one mm. and being able to strafe and move and all that stuff, you just stand in a position. Yeah. Which is, like, really annoying. I felt the same way about it, and especially knowing that it was, yeah, an old one that other than visually they haven't really done anything to, and knowing that we had two (laughs) new ones coming on the horizon, like, I found it hard to, like, really give myself over to it. I think if that had been the one bit of Yakuza for... Mm. A couple of years, and they had polished it a bit. I'd be more in, but yeah. yeah, it was it was hard to really sink too far into it. Was it like 2014? It must have been something like that because it came I was out on ask PS3 you, and four, right back then. I think so. It must have been around. I thought it was older. I thought it was like PS2. There was another yeah. one they made on the PS3, which was the one that they haven't done. Okay, which was right. Tenzan. Ah, yes, yes. And then Ishin, I believe, came out on the PS3 and four. Okay, at the same time, I think it was 2014. When Talos Principle came out, <laughs> and uh, also Alien Isolation and uh, <laughs> Destiny One, um, but yeah, it it honestly it feels like it should be older, um, based on that. Yeah, like it's almost like tank controls. Like right. you ho- you're yeah. blocking, and when you're doing it, assumedly you're facing your opponent. But if they sidestep, if they strafe, or they dodge, you just can't react. Because right. I've never really played much of the classic style of combat of those games, and I sure. kind of felt like. Oh, I'm probably not going to love uh, like a dragon, Gaiden, the man who erased his name. <laughs> yes, based on that. But it fit because it's been it's a you know it's a new game. Yeah, yeah. Even though it's using that old combat system. Yeah. It feels it, it feels so much different. One hundred percent. And what all of the other I like, I, I guess I don't know. Maybe the PS2 ones were like that, or like three on the PS3 and mm. whatever. But like. Is Ishin also doing sort of a separate thing where it feels different to the, even those older yeah. hackers again? Probably, yeah, probably, yeah. Because you've got, you've got the weapons. Like, it's, you've got a gun and you've got a sword. So yeah. it's like it's set in the era where like people are just being like, hey, there's these crazy right. things called guns. Yeah. Did you look up when it came out? Yeah. Which month of 2014? Oh, <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me have a go. Well, it's going to be early because <laughs> if it still came out in, on the PS3 as well, the oh, PS3 yeah. would have been a year old by the Good end logic. of 2014. Yep. So they put it out in February of this year. <laughs> I like to imagine you're saying this. You're on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Yeah. yeah. And you're saying all this, but the question is like, what fruit is native to Spain? <laughs> uh, <laughs> just let Eddie just trust the process, okay? It's a uh, it's like pornography, Eddie. Where it's, uh, <laughs> and it might sound weird at the start. Um, oh, I mean, I've got a one in twelve, but. Good can odds. I phone a friend? <laughs> yeah, you can phone me if you want. What's the name of the guy who uh, runs Ryugakotoko Studios? Can I... I'll, look, what date in February is it? <laughs> I, so I was going to say because February... The, <laughs> yeah. like, it, I thought that was your guess. So now, was, the odds yeah. have shrunk because well, you got... I was still thinking February because... I would have said February because it was the anniversary and yeah. I think they talked about that. Um, it came out on the 22nd of February this year, I'm pretty sure. Wow. <laughs> Dude, don't even try to get inside here. <laughs> My mind palace is a scary place. Um, f- February the seventeenth. Uh, February the twenty second. It was oh. the twenty second. I yeah. doubted myself damn, at the last moment. Day. Yeah. God damn it! Why That's basically got, you said the answer out loud? So yeah, but it I'm doesn't give count if that. I go, Eddie. I think it's B. So lock in C. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, damn. but yeah. So uh, it has all of the sort of. You know what's more embarrassing than knowing the date it came out? Not knowing it knowing and being it too and cowardly to even stick with one. it. Yeah. yeah, never doubt yourself ever again about anything. And then you have to be the guy okay, that's like, I, I actually knew. I actually did know. Yeah, yeah. yeah I got yeah. it wrong, so even like, though I said you know, the wrong thing. I actually did know. <laughs> Spiritually, I got it. <laughs> yeah, it it has like all the positives of these games. Like the the characters are so well drawn and well cast, and the story is like engaging and silly and interesting. I just wish it was a little less clunky to play. And I'm yeah. like sort of getting stuck on bits of like, you know, combat, like battle sequences that are, you know, part of the story where I'm like, I swear I've kind of thought about, I'm I th- better at games than this. I think in these games they often do give you a mode where you can just like avoid the combat entirely. And it's, yes. yeah, like all these Yakuza games, I was enjoying the 
story of it, even though it takes a long time to get going, I kind of did think about like maybe I'll just start like putting this on to just like watch as a movie it's it's done the thing where it's like do you want to put it on easy mode temporarily and i've <laughs> oh, been no. like no but i probably will if i want to if you just want to get see it all yeah, yeah. yeah that's the saying february the 17th yes of playing games. <laughs> and it's, it's like, also not connected to like anything that's coming so no. you know it's easy enough to just be like yeah ah, i can just leave this on the pile and yeah you've got another yes. one that's out and another one that's out in two months yeah I said about uh eight that it's like three times the landmass or something of seven that's right yeah they had some what was their specific quote it's like there's so much in this game that if you play it all it'll make you sick <laughs> some bizarre quote like that right it's <laughs> real like uh john romero wants you to suck it down <laughs> yeah. Type of yeah. tone it's, to it's that. a bit of that it's a bit of like japanese sensibility of a quote with perhaps a bit of like Slightly iffy translation oh, on sure. the quote is it you know it's like three different things that go in the mix to be like what a weird thing to say about <laughs> your own game. It'll make you ill if you play it all. <laughs> yeah. Well, the same as the 743 tracks that are now in Mario Kart 8. Mm. Yeah, you played them back to back to back. You probably <laughs> saw the dizzy. game is uh, finally finished <laughs> after mm. coming out in 2014. But it's, it's finally complete. I think it's it's still missing a ton of like. They've put all of these tracks in from the previous games, which is very, very cool, and obviously a lot of work goes into it. Yep. It would be cool if Nine or whatever has all of them. Smash mm. Brothers Ultimate style, because there are well, like 50 tracks that aren't in this. Right, anyway, so this is like, the thing now is that like, yeah, finally now that these are all out, the slate is clear mm. for them to hopefully... Because it's crazy that the Switch will have come and gone without having... I think it might be the only Nintendo console since the... since. The Since Nintendo. the series started, mm -hmm. to not have a I guess original uh, Mario Kart, like the Game Boy and the Game Boy Color didn't have them, but the Game Boy technically came out I think before the Super Nintendo. Mm. Yeah, and that's true. The Game true. Boy Color was sort of just a Game Boy. Yeah, yeah that's so true. you could get that off. The Virtual Boy didn't have one. Yeah, okay, oh, all right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what? If, but that's that's handhelds. So what about? We're talking console, console, SNES, sixty-four GameCube, Wii, Wii U, yeah. Yeah. Okay. The Switch right. is the only one to not get a. But uh, then the ha the game the Game Boy Advance, the DS, and the 3DS all yes. had them. So yeah. 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 The yeah, Seven was great. Yeah. At a certain point, they just go, "Yeah, every new thing we bring out is obviously going to have one of these on it." And mm. I guess the Booster Pass was probably their like. That's true. Yeah. Version of that, and it had some tracks that were like new from Tour mm -hmm. or whatever. I but think Deluxe, like the original, had some stuff that wasn't in Eight. As yeah. Well. Yes. Or maybe it just had all. It the had I think it had everything. Yeah. Yeah, and the DLC. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, they're all like, there's so much in that game now, but it's, yeah, it, it's going to be really interesting to see what they do from here, especially since they added so much stuff into this. There was some like rumor thing that went around, I think in the last week or so that it's apparently this new one is the most it's, it's got the highest budget of any game Nintendo have ever made. It makes sense because Mario Kart 8 has the highest. I think it was just mm. recently that it dropped out of like it's the top 20 of... For the first time since it came out, it's not like, yeah, the highest selling game. Wow. It's Which so is crazy. crazy. Yeah. yeah. So it also, it makes total sense that they've dragged their heels on doing another thing. And yeah, I've probably said this before, but I, I really hope that a lot of people are like, we'll make it like Smash Brothers, make it just Nintendo Kart. Because, yeah, the courses are all well designed, but when you're getting into the realm where there's a lot of them that are just like spooky forest and like... Toilet. And Rome. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, toilet. It's like... <laughs> Is there really a toilet? There's, there's a, a yeah, one bathroom of the last few one ones. where you're like micro machines. <sighs> okay. there. And it's cool, but, yeah, I would much rather see... It's gotten away from pulling stuff from the... And there there is so much cool stuff from the world of the Mario games that they haven't incorporated right. into these tracks. Like there are all these worlds in Mario Odyssey that they could have pulled from. So I would rather see a, you know, a Metroid themed track Absolutely. than just Bangkok. Hyrule you know? Field, like, get like Ocarina of Time, Hyrule Field, right. make yeah. that into a Mario Kart map where you drive around the whole thing. Have a Star Fox, have a Pikmin. Yes, like, yeah. dude, that, I, and yeah. surely that... Uh, I think they are at the point where... Yeah, what because because we know they're working on one because they have openly talked about it. I'm pretty of sure. Of course, yeah. yeah. And it would feel like a big step back now to just go, yeah, here's another Mario Kart with or have it have like a crazy story mode thing, like a Diddy Kong Racing or you know something Maybe. like that. Like mm. it, I, I do hope that it is a bit of a, um, yeah, that they shake it up. But I think like the smartest thing to do for this being a game that 
kind of brought back in so many people that are a bit more casual just based on the numbers that it's sold. Mm. Yeah, if they just went Nintendo Kart, there's a Kirby track, there's mm. a, you know, there's everything. Yeah. Still just called Mario Kart. But yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. Mario they've already Kart got, I mean, they've already sort of broken that barrier by having the Animal Crossing characters and Link was in a totally. DLC of this last one. So, well, yeah. what, Like, you've got fucking Paris. Yeah. Like, yeah. that's not... Mario doesn't live in Paris. <laughs> no. Yeah. So, he lives in New Donk City. Yeah. <laughs> Famously. You could, I, I would so be in favour of that. A bunch of tracks. Four or five Mario ones based on Odyssey levels or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, like, recent things. A uh, 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 Wonder Seed yeah, level. Yeah. Because they did do that a bit. I think maybe it's seven where they've got, like, a... Um, you know, like a, a piranha plant themed course where you're mm. like going into the sewers and stuff and it's very like, oh, this is cool because it's based on Mario Brothers 1. Like mm. I'd, I'd love to see just a bit more stuff like that where yeah. they're – because they sort of – Hotel Mario level. Yeah, mm. they've like sort of stopped trying to do that kind of stuff when it's like – it's not like you've run out of st- – like they one of the newer tracks in the booster course was a Yoshi's Island track. Right. And it's like – it's got the music from the Yoshi's Island games. It's got like a little the little question mark thing that you fly through and it opens up a secret path. And it's like, yeah, why well, aren't they doing more stuff like this? Mm. Like pull from the old games. With like, Smash Brothers Ultimate too. Like wasn't Sakurai saying something about like, yeah, I can't imagine how they mm. do another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. like you, you don't have some other place where all of these things are going to show up and where you can get all your co-branding deals happening yeah, and all that stuff. Yeah, for sure. Driving your Mercedes Benzes. <laughs> yeah. Get get Joker. Oh, either get, one. Oh, get Joker oh, riding yeah. a, driving around um Morgana when 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 he's like oh, the, yeah. when he's like the big bus. Yeah. Or get get Joker level. driving around the bloody insane asylum. Man. Yeah, <laughs> dude. I like I love the Joker. Totally fully <laughs> uh, agree that Mario Kart should this is its opportunity to really go, you know what? Yeah. This it's, ain't your granddaddy's and Mario. I, it's Kart. ultimate time. It does feel this like This is your dad's Mario <laughs> Kart. <laughs> it feels like the fact that they have taken such a long time to work on this and then announce it does feel like surely they're doing something a bit, you know, they've had the time. They ha- they haven't had to like get one out to fill a gap on right. the switch because the old one, which has given yeah. them the benefit of time to like really put everything into it. But and they've supported this game for years, 10 years nearly yeah. since the Wii U one, but with doing revamps of tracks from the older games mm. which you'd imagine is a b-team thing and then i think mario kart tour was a b-team thing yeah and right. also the, i so. mean in all those booster uh course tracks like if you they look fine but if you compare them to oh, absolutely the the actual ones that were in mario kart 8 from the start like right. they are a little visually downgraded mm-hmm. they're, they're sort of not as visually impressive as those original ones were so you, you can see like a bit of a drop off so even just seeing something from like it you know it, it bothers me a little bit just the inconsistency like if you play these tracks on random and you go like mm. one after the other they sort of don't look like they're from the same game which, sure. which bothers me a little bit i still reckon they should just fucking chuck them all in though mm. i know I, I would love to even just drive around a course that looked like the snes course but now i'm in my weird looking Oh yeah, Yoshi motorbike, modern car. Yeah, with all these <laughs> clown shoes or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, fully, fully behind you. Let's make it happen. All right. Who do we call? <laughs> Shiggy. All right. He's the boss. Hey, get out of Hollywood. Yeah. We got a, <laughs> yeah. one last yeah. job. Stop rubbing you. shoulders. Uh, before we get out of here, yeah, you've been playing a bit more Persona Five. Yeah. Speaking of the Joker himself, um, I, yeah, I kind of feel the same as I did before. It, it. It, it is ramping up in terms of like getting to the battles um, and like rather than throwing into these unskippable or not unskippable, just like cutscenes that you kind of do have to watch to know what the fuck's going on. It's sending you back to the hideout a bit more where it's like there's a talk thing and you can talk to your companions if you want, but if not, you can just go bang into yep. the mission straight into another battle. And it's, yeah, it's fun. I think the difficulty is really well paced um, it's, it's, uh, it, yeah, it's interesting. It, you do get all your sort of, um, companions back, but it, they're all kind of interchangeable. Like the powers and the personas and stuff aren't quite as important. All, I guess it makes sense. All of that stuff is far more simplistic than it is even in Strikers. That's kind of the same thing in, um, a Mario RPG where right. Peach is a, you can, she can heal people, but all the others that you have, uh, Sort of, yeah. 
in- interchangeable. There's not They've much got reason to like vague strengths and weakness. Like the cloud guy is a little better at magic or whatever, but yeah. he doesn't even get that many spells. But not right, crazily. Yeah. Like it's really only worth switching Peach in and out if you if you need some healing. But there's right. not a great deal of like. It's just kind of which character you prefer. Yeah. Than not. And this, it, it's like if one of your character dies in a mission, you just replace it with one of them who wasn't in your party and there's no right. penalty or anything. With, yeah. right. right, right. That's interesting. Um, and I like, I'll, I'll keep plugging away at it. It's a, it's a perfectly good game. Um, it's just, it's not, like as with the other Persona games I've played, um, or unlike them, it hasn't really hooked me in. Yeah. And, and I'm, I was surprised just given the setting and everything, but... Totally fine game, absolutely worth playing if you have Game Pass, but it's it's not going to be, be one that to I'm... read a novel. Yeah, well, yes, <laughs> and I don't think I've played enough to know it's not going to be like on my game of the year list, which well, means spoilers. Sure. I'll play other things before the <laughs> end of the year. But like a cool thing for the Personiacs out there. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And if you're looking for a tactical strategy game that is maybe not quite as complicated as I mean, certainly not. As complicated as XCOM, mm. even Fire Emblem's probably another level. You have way more people Absolutely. in your, your party. Yeah, it's a good if you've loved the other Persona Five stuff and right. you're new to that genre. Yeah. it would be the best intro, I reckon. Yes, I wish they'd gotten around a Jagged Alliance Three at right. some point this year. We're speaking of tag for the Tactaniacs out mm-hmm. there, <laughs> um, but I probably won't by the end of the year. Yeah, well, there's <laughs> not a lot of time left. Nah. Um. Yeah. Any Any games that we've got on our to playlist before we uh, we adjudge the look. It's been such a best. bullshit ass year that there's <laughs> there's quite a few that I think would probably have ended up on mine had I played them or played more of them. Mm. And I've just had to accept that there's just not there's just not time. Yeah, which is you know kind of a blessing to, because it's already been such a big year and hard to put together a ten that mm. in in a lot of ways it's like yeah mm. kind of a relief to not have any more. To wrestle over mm. that Avatar game is the only one that yeah. I can think of that's even sort of coming out for the rest of the year. That was yeah. on my right. Ra- they put out a DLC for Dredge, but oh yeah, oh, yeah. you've got to play it during the main game, which oh, means yeah, that's and odd. you can play it at any time during the main game. But so I don't know if I have a save I could just load up or whatever. Yeah. But it just made right. me a little less interested in. Mm. I'm looking forward to seeing mm. what Avatar's like. Yeah. yeah, I think it could be fun. I've got to pl- I've got to give Phantom Liberty a crack. Um, What's Phantom the Liberty? Cyberpunk DLC. Oh, right, of course. Yeah, because yeah. um, I just went back into the main game and gave that a go after the patch and everything. It was good. Um, yeah, I'm excited for that. And I'm going to uh, try and play Avatar co-op with me bird, I reckon. Oh! <laughs> um, speaking of your partner. Yes. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm... Both <laughs> disgusting <words. laughs> I, I, I guess I got to play more Hogwarts Legacy. I've played half of it. So for me, that's enough to to judge. Yep. I just was like, I, I'm nowhere near even scratching the surface. I've played like literally 50% of the main campaign. So that's one I'll, I'll, I'll have enough Well, you've played the belt. an eighth of much of it as she has. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, Avatar game coming up. But apart from that, be stunned to... Get out the pencil and mm. write some numbers have and some games already? next to them. Yeah, absolutely. We'll have, uh, yeah, we'll be doing the same thing we've done the last few years. A couple of Game of the Year episodes. We'll pre-record a few things so we can mm. have a little Christmas break. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, and I guess we'll be asking people for their uh, yeah. picks pretty soon. Yeah, So true. keep an eye out for that on the socials because it's always fun to have own, that uh, included in the um, end of year episodes. Yes. Get your own little lists going. That's right. Next week... Well, the day after we record next week is the Game Awards. Yeah. I'm interested to see yes. that. Yes. I always love watching those fucking awkward ass shows. <laughs> Speaking um, of ads, yeah. 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 <laughs> I love ads. Speaking dude. of ads being inserted. Yeah, well maybe some uh some reveals or some, you know, some new footage of some games yeah. at least. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of ads being inserted, let's get out of here and have some fun. <laughs> <laughs> what do you reckon? <laughs> <laughs> all right guys yep. thanks very much for listening <laughs> filthycasuals.com.au for the links to all the stuff we have going on we got the youtube channel check all of that out yeah. uh the patreon get on there support the show we really 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 appreciate it we if you enjoy getting this every do. week for free yeah consider chucking in a couple of shekels to yes. keep the lights on here uh and you get a uh, you get a bonus show every week that we do certainly do uh thank you for listening we will see you next time and as we say here at the end of every episode of filthy casuals the Talos principal uh, is the guy who's the boss of the Talos vice principal. <laughs> I was looking at what we talked about. <laughs> and let me tell you, I had a bunch of caffeine, but not enough to, to manage that.